Good evening, high school football fans. This is High School Football America for June 25th, 2015. I'm Jeff Fisher, host of the show and founder and editor-in-chief of High School Football America and HighSchoolFootballAmerica.com. Man, my blood is starting to pump as I spend uh, each and every day looking into uh, what's going to happen in 2015. A lot of time being spent uh, over the last couple of weeks getting ready to release our preseason Top 25, which, as always, will come out on August 1st. Uh, Max Preps uh, is releasing its early contenders poll, and Steve Spiewak, who's a good friend of ours here at High School Football America will join us on the show next week to talk about that. Uh, looks like, and maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but if you look at uh, what their uh, their early rankings, and they're kind of staggering the way they've been putting them out from 25 on up. Uh, the number two team released today, Miami Central, uh, pretty much means that De La Salle out of California will be the uh, preseason number one team in the nation, according to Max Preps. USA Today High School Sports will be released its poll right around the time we will. I believe theirs is going to come out uh, near the end of July. They've been doing a lot of early contenders and previews as well. Uh, tonight on the show, what we're going to do is we're going to start giving you a sneak peek at everything that we're doing and, and what's going into everything. Uh, Allen is the three-time defending national champion for high school football America. We were on the bandwagon before anyone else. I know they had a lot of people last year, but uh, we were there. They were the champs in 2012, 13, and 14. For those of you that have uh, just come on board with High School Football America, in 2012, we uh, did an opinion poll just like everyone else does, and uh, that year they were co-national champs with uh, John Curtis out of Louisiana. But over the last two years, we have developed a, an, an algorithm that we use to to uh, determine our national champion. At times, we had people going, uh, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And quite honestly, the numbers don't lie. And we're pretty happy with uh, the way the algorithm, algorithm is stacked up. And uh, it, it seems to do a good job of breaking things down. Allen was number one in 2013 and 14. And, uh, of course, we all know that the Eagles uh, lose Kyler Murray, their incredible quarterback, who's gone on to Texas A&M. And uh, tonight on the show, we're going to take a look at uh, who gets to replace uh, Kyler Murray uh, a lot. To a lot riding on the line there. Uh, they have a, a young man who's committed to Oregon that's transferred out of Minnesota. They got a kid that was undefeated as the JV quarterback, and we're going to talk about that on the show tonight. We're going to talk about all of our contenders and give you some snapshots of some of the things that we're taking into consideration as we look to see who the preseason number one will be. And we do use the algorithm a bit uh, in uh, the preseason poll. However, there is some opinion in that. So uh, it's it's not like uh, it will be during the season. And the way we've run our rankings over the last two years since instituting the algorithm, we put out our preseason poll and then we allow teams to play through Labor Day because uh, it, it's too hard when teams aren't playing to, to put the algorithm into effect. So that's when our first poll will come out. Uh, it always comes out on Sunday. So uh, on September September the 6th, we will release our first in-season poll and then do so uh, right through uh, the regular season. Last year and the year before that, we decided not to uh, rank teams during the postseason. This year, we've, we've tweaked the uh, algorithm. We think it will give uh, everybody a great look uh, from, uh, from that perspective. So instead of just crowning a regular season champion, we will do regular season champion, then go through the playoffs, and obviously uh, just before Christmas, we will announce our mythical national champion. So we're excited about tonight's show to talk about a lot of teams, a lot of players out there. There are some top-notch teams this year. Got to be honest with you, as I looked at things, uh, the final 25 last year, the final top 25, a lot of those teams, uh, well over a dozen teams, are uh, in contention for being in the preseason top 25 this year. And we're going to try and talk about it, as many of those teams as we can as we go through here. I uh, want to first uh, welcome in all of our partners here at High School Football America. First, Echo 1612. Echo, man, if you have not checked out this product yet, you do not know what you are missing. Echo 1612 gives you, get this, instant replay on your sideline coaches eight seconds after the play is finished. They are the origina originators of this technology. Uh, Huddle's trying to do some stuff this year, but I got to tell you, I know Echo, and I know what these guys have above Huddle. You can do Echo without a Wi-Fi connection, 
cellular connection, and you don't need a data plan. This is cutting edge technology created by coaches for coaches. And we've had the founder on here, Chad Cargill, and uh, his uh, coach there at uh, Christian Heritage Academy in Oklahoma where it was developed, uh, Tony Merrill. And you heard him talk about that. If you have not heard those shows, make sure you go back into our archive and listen to those two guys talk about this. Coaches are raving about it. More and more sales each and every day. And what that means, coaches, is quite honestly, your opponent may have this technology going against you, so why would you even wait to uh, to buy it? And uh, you should go to echo1612.com to learn more. Also, another technology that we love, and it's a, it's compatible with Huddle, and, and at some point, I believe they're going to su- surpass Huddle uh, with what they do. Crossover with a K. It's crossover.com. They will take your game film and save you so much time time so much time all you got to do is take uh, your uh, your film and send it whether it's your film or your, your the film of the team that you're scouting and they will break it down for you and turn it around very very quickly tag it tendencies down and down, all those things that you need all those things that take hours of your time on the weekends will now be done for you. Jason Strunk at Lubbock High School in Texas, who writes the turnaround for us, has already jumped on board. Another good friend of mine, Phil Stamball from Pennsylvania, played in the NFL. He's uh, taking a look at it. They're going to grab it this year. You you can't beat the amount of time savings they're going to give you. You're still going to have to game film, folks, but instead of that mind-bending, tedious stuff that you have to do, where you sit down and you go through each and every one, Crossover with a K will do it for you. You can get a free demo. Ken Hoffman is uh, leading the team there. He's a good friend of mine. He's been on the show. You can listen to Ken's uh, interview, just like uh, we were talking about with Echo. You can listen to that interview. Go back in their archives at highschoolfootballamerica.com or on the Artist First radio network in their archives, and you can listen to how Crossover can change your life. I think Strunky told me that he believes that it'll sell, save them $10,000 this year. So, again, Crossover with a K dot com forward slash football. Get your free demo. And also tonight with us, Southern Sport and the TDI Razor, the debris inhibitor razor. It does two things for you. First off, it just cuts down on your tape problems. I mean, tape is expensive. The kids that tape, you know, for show, for that spatting, uh, it'll do that. But more importantly, and I hate the rubber pellets from field turf whenever I go out. Now here in Southern California, generally speaking, I'm on the sidelines without socks on. So they're just going into my loafers, my sneakers, whatever it is, and they are just messing it up, and they hurt like heck, especially those pellets that have been down on the field for a while. Some some fields have those nice, softer, uh, newer rubber pellets, but a lot of uh, places out there, they hurt and sting, and then they get all over the place. You know, Mom hates them when you bring them home in the gym bag, and they're all over the place, but the TDI Razor, razor folks have come up with a great solution with the debris inhibitor razor. It's American made. They have a patent on it. They have just one of the best products out there and uh, lots of teams taking it. It gives you that uniformity so all the kids look the same out there. 23 great colors. TDI Razor. That's Razor with a U. R-A-Z-U-R. TDI Razor.com. And if you go there and place your order and mention High School Football America with our code, and it's real easy, H-S-F-A for High School Football America, you will get a discount on your order. Folks, you will not be disappointed in how good the TDI TDI Razor performs, and one of my good friends who's been in the garment industry for over three decades, one of the top American manufacturers through the years, they used to do um, a lot of body armor for the, uh, for the military. This guy said the biggest problem with the TDI Razor, and it's not a problem at all, is it lasts so well it can take each and every washing and keeps and comes back and keeps on ticking through. So it's a great product. Check out the folks at Southern Sport at the Debris Inhibitor Razor. All right, well, we talked uh, tonight uh, about what we're going to uh, really do, which is focus on some of the teams that will have a shot at beginning the season in our top 25. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about a couple of other things here. If you have not been with us since January, you have not seen the coach's job board, which is... Oh, it grows every day, and people are just loving it coming back multiple times a day as we add new jobs. If you want to have your job listed on the job board, all you have to do is email me at jeff at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Right now, we're above 200 uh, jobs available. I think we've had 2,000 jobs listed since we started 
back in uh, January, and we appreciate everybody who comes back on a regular basis to check out uh, where the next job for them is coming from. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, HSFB America, and also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash High School Football America. Getting some more pictures up on our Instagram Instagram account, uh, so you should follow us on Instagram as well. And don't forget, uh, if you're too busy to read the website every day, we always encapsulate what's going on with the Two Minute Drill podcast that you can get on iTunes. Take it on the go, on your phone. It's the Two Minute Drill. We do it daily at High School Football America, so you can listen on iTunes or at High School Football America. Com. And uh, speaking of news of the day, uh, let's uh, check out uh, a couple of stories here. Uh, the big one coming out today from USA Today High School Sports out of Virginia. Chris Scott, coach of the 6A football champion Ocean Lakes Virginia Beach program, suspended for the first three games of the season for recruiting violations, and the program has been placed on warning for three years. The report coming uh, to USA Today High School Sports by the Virginian pilot. Uh, this is becoming more and more a thing around America. Of course, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we learned that uh, Butch Goncharoff, the great coach at Bellevue in Washington, uh, going to be suspended for two games uh, for recruiting violations. Uh, we had a, a coach over the weekend from North Carolina also suspended for possible recruiting problems. So uh, getting bigger and bigger. And uh, Ocean Lakes, uh, they are getting some love. Uh, Max Preps had them in their early contender poll. Uh, we did not have them in the top 25 last year. Ocean Lakes beating Centerville 30-20 to in the uh, the championship game, the 6A championship game in Virginia last year. They finished number 10 uh, with a 15-0 and record in the USA Today Super 25 last year. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, affects uh, Ocean Lakes going into the season. The quote from uh, Virginia Public Schools spokesperson Lauren Nolasco to the uh, Virginian pilot reads like this, uh, Coach Scott will not take part in summer practice except for the first week, and he will also sit out the first three games of the season. I can confirm uh, Beach District Executive Committee has found that Ocean Lakes High School has been in violation of the Virginia High School League rule on uh, proselytizing. And as a result, the football program will be placed on warning for three years beginning July 1st and going until June 30th of 2018. So uh, there's some big news out of Virginia. Speaking of big news, uh, earlier this week, Oregon became the second state in the nation. I'm sorry, the first state in the nation to adopt USA football's heads-up tackling program, which uh, has gotten a lot of notoriety and uh, really is aiming to, to safen the sport. And uh, beginning in 2016, all high school coaches in the state of Oregon will have to be schooled on the Heads Up program. There will be a, uh, a main person on the team that will be trained, and then that person is in charge of making sure that the rest of the staff is familiar with the tackling techniques set up by the Heads Up program at USA Football. You can go to highschoolfootballamerica.com not only to read the story, but also see a video we posted up there from USA Football that shows you the, uh, the tackling techniques that they have put into the Heads Up program. And speaking of safety, uh, yesterday there was an announcement by the NFL and several other partners, including the National Trainers Association, uh, Gatorade. They are putting together a program that uh, will double what they did last year as they threw a million dollars at uh, in-need areas when it comes to uh, trainers and, and making sure that these, uh, especially these inner-city uh, teams, have trainers. It's a real problem where there are practices where teams do not have trainers on the sidelines there. So the NFL and its partners are uh, trying to uh, help that. And last year they put up a million bucks. Uh, this year it's $2 million. You can check out the story at highschoolfootballamerica.com. Seven on seven really kind of taking center stage here as we get ready for the start of the 2015 season. The seven on seven national select in Hoover, Alabama, coming up uh, mid-July, there are um, several qualifiers that are being held around the country. Uh, North Gwinnett from Georgia already in, Fayetteville from Arkansas already in, and Landry Walker High School from Louisiana already in, Warren Easton from Louisiana, the 2014 champs. You can check at uh, highschoolfootballamerica.com to see when all the regionals are being held. Uh, there are uh, two this weekend. One is in uh, Illinois 
and uh, the other one, I believe, is Tennessee or South Carolina. You can go to highschoolfootballamerica.com to get all the dates there. Speaking of 7-on-7, seven seven, and we have a call in to uh, uh, Coach Kevin uh, Kelly for the 2015 preview on Pulaski Academy out of Arkansas. Uh, Pulaski Academy, which is, uh, they are the defending champs in Arkansas in uh, Class 5A. They had a 76-game, 7-on-7 win streak snapped over this past weekend in the shootout of the South. And uh, they bounced back to win it, but they had their 76-game win streak snap. For those of you not familiar with Pulaski and uh, Coach Kelly and what he does, he hardly ever punts. Uh, doesn't matter if they're, you know, fourth and nine at their own eight, they're going to run a play. And uh, also doesn't uh, do anything other than an onside kick. So we're going to get uh, Coach Kelly on here uh, in the very near future to talk about uh, his program and what he does there. So uh, lots of news. And again, you can keep up daily by uh, not only going to the website, but uh, if you're too busy for that, take it on the go with you on uh, on iTunes or our any device that can download a podcast, uh, you can download us uh, the Two Minute Drill. It's uh, daily, and it's a great way to keep up with all the news from around the nation. All right, as promised, uh, when we come back, we're going to start digging in, delving into the 2015 season, getting ready for the release August 1st of our preseason top 25. And what we're going to do tonight is kind of talk about some of the teams we're considering and considering and why we're considering them. That. When we come back, and we're going to start things off with the three-time defending mythical national champs for high school football America, the Allen Eagles under Tom Westerberg. Hey, they lost Kyler Murray, 42-0 and as their starting quarterback, now at Texas A&M, but they've got some talent returning. They've had a transfer in that's making all kinds of news down in Allen. He's a uh, Oregon committed quarterback, but right now after spring practice, Coach Westerberg says he's not the number one guy. Last year's JV quarterback is. So we're going to break that down for you and some of the other teams that we're looking at. When we come back, you're listening to High School Football America. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, you'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. turf rubber pellets be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, 
extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the debris inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. Listen up, football coaches. You need to check out a new scouting film solution called Crossover. That's Crossover with a K. Crossover Intelligence for Football gives you the edge you need to defeat your opponents. They not only break down and analyze scouting games for you, but they give you interactive tendency reports to diagnose your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. Crossover is your personal advanced scout, accessible from any mobile device or PC, and even integrates with your existing film platform like Huddle. Just transfer your scouting film from your existing video exchange service to the Crossover website, and in as little as 12 hours, your film will become completely indexed and tagged. Each play will become its own clip, allowing you to search the footage for anything you'd like. Their interactive down and distance reports will let you visualize your opponent's play calls in every situation or formation. Crossover Intelligence will give you the scouting edge you need to defeat your opponents. Go to crossover.com forward slash football to sign up for a quick five minute demo to see how it can work for your team. That's crossover with a K, crossover.com forward slash football. Jeff Fisher back on High School Football America as we uh, go through our contenders for the preseason top 25 that we will release on August 1st. Uh, just um, lots of teams uh, on the list right now. We're probably at about 45 that we're looking to get in. One thing we were very proud of last year was the ability to spot a couple of teams that had really great seasons that uh, the other national ranking services out there didn't see early on. We had South Lake Carroll in the top 25 in the preseason. They had a pretty good year, and we're going to talk about them in just a second. Uh, uh, South Panola, another team that uh, we were high on, and they had a, a great season as well, ending up in our uh, top 10. Uh, they ended up number 8 last year in the final rankings. Um, South Lake Carroll ended up number 22. A couple of teams that we hit before others did. Uh, Maryville out of Tennessee, we had them in there. And uh, Euless Trinity as well. So uh, just real happy with uh, the ability to bring the algorithm together with uh, the opinion, and again, if you're just joining us, I explained this at the top. Preseason poll comes out on August 1. It is a mixture of our algorithm and our opinion, and then we wait uh, until we get through Labor Day before we put out our first in-season poll to let the algorithm hop in. Allen, the three-time defending champ, we've used the algorithm over the last two years. Uh, we were talking about teams that we kind of spotted before anybody else did last year. I've uh, Gonna, I'm going to throw out a couple of teams right now. I, I like Carmel out of Indiana. I can see them doing some things. Uh, Good Council out of Maryland. They were in our top 25 last year, and they've got a lot of returning talent uh, out there. Um, some other teams that I think that uh, we're looking at, maybe no one else is. I like Pittsburgh Central Catholic out of uh, the Pittsburgh area in Pennsylvania. On the east side, they got the, you have the two-time defending state champs in 4A, uh, St. Joseph's Prep. Uh, last year, we had them very high. Once again, this year, they're going to play a very big uh, non-league schedule before they get into the Philadelphia Catholic League. And uh, so those are some of those teams out there. We're probably going to have some more for you, but uh, right now we'll kind of hang on those. As we go through everything, Texas looks like uh, the big state once again this year. Uh, last year, just to let you know, Allen was the defending national champ. They won the national championship, our mythical national championship. And then uh, we had Cedar Hill at number 11. They were the 6A Division II champs back-to-back uh, -to -back for the Longhorns. And uh, then we had um, South Lake Carroll at 22, Euless Trinity at 23, and DeSoto at 25. All of those teams are in the hunt 
this year for the championships. And uh, before we get to take a look at some of these teams, I want to mention that the championship games at AT&T Stadium appear as though they will not be held there this year as planned. The NFL released its schedule December 19th, the last day of the season in Texas for all the big championship games. Uh, the Jets are playing the Cowboys there, and there is no way, obviously, to have an NFL game and the Texas championship game. So uh, yesterday... Uh, the UIL, the state's governing body, saying that it's looking at San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, and also uh, they're looking at Houston as well. They need uh, they need turf and they need multiple uh, locker rooms, and those are the uh, two stadiums that uh, would fit the bill for them on that. So uh, I'm sure uh, Jerry Jones is trying to figure out what the heck it's going to do. He's going to do if he can keep the championship games there, get those 50,000-plus attendance figure, figures back, but uh, for right now, it, it, it looks like uh, unless uh, there's an 11th hour deal to have something happen, that the uh, championships will not be played at AT&T Stadium this year. All right, let's uh, talk about the teams that we're looking at. Actually, the people we talked, the teams we talked about in last year's final top 25, they are back. Uh, you can add Katie into the mix. They started the season uh, last year in our preseason poll. Uh, but let's start with Allen, and this is in no particular order. We're just going to go through the list, uh, do it a little uh, alphabetically, I guess is the best way we can look at it. But you know, the big question mark is Allen with its 40-plus wins. Can they challenge for a fourth straight big classification championship in the state of Texas? And the, the, the biggest question mark is at quarterback, where the guy that uh, led them to a 42-0 and record as the quarterback, and then the team obviously on a 43-game win streak overall, Kyler Murray has left. He, uh, the dual-threat quarterback, is on his way to Texas A&M. He's already enrolled there, and uh, there's a hole at quarterback. But uh, uh, lo and behold, back in February, everybody got very excited when a young man from Minnesota who is committed to Oregon, a dual-threat quarterback, Seth Green, transferred into uh, Allen. Uh, he's considered a four-star prospect, uh, played for East Ridge High School in Minnesota uh, last year, uh, threw for over 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns. Uh, and everybody thought, well, the, the quarterback uh, job is solved. But we had Tom Westerberg on the show here before that happened. He said, you know, we've got some kids down below that we really believe are, are pretty darn good. And uh, Mitchell uh, Jonke was uh, the JV starter last year, 10-0 and as a starter. Um, uh, Kyler, Kyler Murray's backup, Jared Harvey, uh, is back as well, uh, both of them juniors to be. And, you know, so they, we thought that was going to make for an interesting mix over the spring. And then, uh, lo and behold, when spring ball ended, a couple of reports in the Dallas area out of the Dallas Morning News talking the, about the fact that uh, Seth Green was not the uh, guy coming out of camp as the uh, the number one guy. They were staying within the program because he performed so well. So Mitchell Junkie is uh, the kid right now that people are a lot, expecting a lot out of to see if Allen can get to that uh, fourth straight championship. And there is a lot of talent uh, coming back. It's, it's Murray that is the, the one that uh, everybody is wondering about. The offensive line going to be anchored by uh, one of the nation's top prospects. I think he is the uh, top tackle prospect with all of the recruiting services, Greg Little. Uh, they return four players with experience on the offensive line and uh, at right tackle. Will Sherman started 12 games last year, and he was thrust into the lineup after Oklahoma signee Bobby Evans went down with his ACL problems. So the offensive line is going to be pretty darn good. Uh, just like last year, a lot of questions on the defensive side of things. Uh, can the defense be good? Can they lead them to a championship? Uh, offensive skill players, uh, running back David Feliciano is back. Wide receiver Kerry Hall, they're all back for their senior seasons. And there was a transfer in from a wide receiver from Florida by the name of Tevin Stevenson. So uh, Allen will uh, will find out really early how good they are. Denton Geyer uh, has won two state championships in the last three years. Uh, last year, 10-2, and two, they bring back a darn good quarterback, a junior quarterback in Sean Robinson. So Allen will open up against Denton Geyer. And one of the other main things that we should talk about is Eagle Stadium is open. Uh, last year, Allen won all of those championships. 
championships, whether they were mythical national championships or the state championship, by being on the road because of the $60,000 stadium, uh, 60000 I wish, $60 million stadium known as Eagle Stadium was closed down. The cracks have been repaired. Stadium was reopened for uh, graduation uh, earlier this month. But anyway, uh, back to Alan Denton Geyer. Uh, Sean Robinson is Denton Geyer's quarterback. Uh, threw for just under 2,800 yards last year as a sophomore, 33 touchdowns. Andy rushed for 10 yards a carry, uh, over 1,400 yards and 17 touchdowns. So that'll be a good test. And then they have Vieira, a 9-1 and team from Florida, that game played in Texas, so the second straight year, Allen's going out of state. Uh, last year, they took on Dutch Fork, a very good team from uh, South Carolina, and won that game. So, uh, Allen, lots of talent back. The question is, who is going to play quarterback, and how well will they be able to lead the Eagles and see if they can win a fourth straight state championship and a fourth straight mythical national championship from us here at High School Football America. Uh, Cedar Hill, again, they finished 11th last year. Two straight titles. They've been in three straight title games. Uh, they look to have a lot of talent back this year in quarterback uh, junior Avery Davis, uh, right in the same district is DeSoto. Uh, mark it down on your calendar is the big game October 23rd between Cedar Hill and DeSoto. We had uh, T Todd Peterman, the new head coach at DeSoto, former offensive coordinator who was elevated after Claude Mathis left for SMU. He has got 16 players with D1 offers at the head of the class, Tristan Wallace. Uh, Tristan, Tristan Wallace last year went down with a broken ankle in the early part of the season and uh, came back for the playoffs. He's a commit dual threat quarterback commit to Ohio State. He's back. Uh, if you go back and listen to the interview that we did back in February with uh, Todd Peterman, you will we'll hear about a lot of returning talent. They played a lot of sophomores last year. Uh, I, I got to tell you, DeSoto's getting a lot of looks as far as top five and above in our preseason poll here. And uh, the, the biggest question may be, you know, how they perform in the big games. Uh, they went down twice in the state semis to Allen, and then last year they lost to Allen uh, again in the second round of the playoffs. So do they have the ability to uh, to take it to the next level? Coach Peterman believes that they do. So it'll be interesting to see how DeSoto does. They're definitely in the mix. And, uh, you know, I mean, to be honest about it, with Allen and everything they've done in the returning talent, uh, we definitely see them in the top 10, we think, at this point. I think it's, you know, we're far enough along in the process to see, say that we do see Allen in the, uh, in the top 10 as they go for their fourth straight championship. Two teams that we saw early on last year and, and had South Lake Carroll right. South Lake Carroll is um, a team that uh, has some talent back, and everybody's excited to see what uh, how Wasson and company is able to do. The Dragons, uh, one of those teams that, uh, uh, you know, year in and year out, we know that they, uh, you know, they're going to put up some points. They're a great program, and Wasson uh, believes that they had a, a good spring. Uh, the biggest question is the quarterback position. Montana Murphy uh, was expected to be the guy running the show, but uh, went down with a back injury. That gave junior quarterback Mason Holmes a lot of time time with the offense, uh, and Wasson feels uh, that uh, he's ahead of where they expected to be after spring, spring ball. He uh, made that quote in the uh, Star-Telegram. Um, there's, there's talent on both sides of the line, and uh, don't be surprised to see South Lake Carroll back in the hunt this year. Uh, Euless Trinity, a new head coach, Steve Lineweaver, has stepped down. Chris uh, Jensen, the offensive coordinator, is moved up. Trinity has a lot of talent back as well, especially at the quarterback and running back position, and that's going to make the Trojans another team to contend with here in 2015. Tyler uh, Natty has uh, had a great year, and uh, Jerron Wilson rushing for more than 3,000 yards over the last two seasons. Uh, papers down there in Dallas uh, both saying that uh, both of those guys had great spring balls, as did uh, Chris Daniels, a 6'3", 300-pound defensive tackle, one of the uh, top recruits in the, straight, in the state in 2016. So, you know, don't, don't count Euless Trinity out. So it should be a fun year in Texas to see who can grab the gold. And uh, the best way to keep up with everything, we have a section, state-by-state -state section on High School Football America. So you can keep up with all the Texas high school football news by going to highschoolfootballamerica.com. Well, you know, Florida's got some some good teams. you got a team out here in California in the northern part of the state, De La Salle, that 
knows how to win. I mean, it's been winning for a long time, as we know, with a 151-game win streak at one point. Uh, we, we like them. We're going to talk about the De La Salle Spartans. Bishop Gorman out of Nevada. Again, another tough schedule before it comes back to Nevada where it rolls. A couple of teams out of Georgia we want to talk about here, Colquitt County and uh, Archer. Uh, lots, to, lots to talk about still on the show. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about some of the contenders that are uh, in the running for our preseason top. 25 that comes out August the 1st. That and more. You're listening to High School Football America. We'll be right back. Instant replays on a high school football sideline? Seriously? Yes. The future is here with Echo 1612's Instant Replay Sideline System. Echo's cutting-edge technology was the first to the market two years ago. Echo delivers instant replay to your sideline on an iPad within seconds of a play being finished so that you can make tomorrow's coaching changes today. This NFHS-approved product may be the biggest change in high school football since the invention of the helmet. Coaches, you'll gain a competitive edge by adding Echo 1612's instant replay sideline system to your coaching toolbox. How cool is this? The Echo Instant Replay Sideline System works with both your current booth and end zone cameras. Plus, and this is an important point, Echo works without any cellular connection, data plans, or internet. The list of high school football programs using Echo 1612 system is growing daily, meaning your opponent may already have a game time advantage. You don't want to be left out, do you? The Echo 1612 advantage is simple. Echo plus an iPad equals instant replay on your sideline that improves your game planning. Seriously, you'll be making coaching adjustments in real time, not the day after. Except no copycats, Echo 1612 is the best on the market. Echo 1612's cutting edge technology helps you make tomorrow's adjustments today. Learn more at Echo1612.com. Turf rubber pellets, be gone. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is a seamless outer sock that was specifically designed to keep crumb rubber and other fine debris from artificial or grass playing surfaces out of an athlete's shoes and socks, thus keeping such debris out of gym bags and locker rooms. The Razor, spelled R-A-Z-U-R, is favored by athletes who want the look of tape, by trainers who no longer have the time to tape only for show, and by moms who no longer want that crumb rubber in the house. The Debris Inhibitor Razor is made in America. It's 70% nylon and 30% spandex, making it extra lightweight and very durable, and it's backed by a one-year performance guarantee. The Debris Inhibitor Razor covers just the right amount of a player's shoe while keeping those shoelaces tight. It's fully customizable, machine washable, and more importantly, it's easy to get on and off. The Debris Inhibitor Razor comes in 23 colors and sizes are youth, medium, large, and for that extra big foot, extra large. Founded in 2010 by former University of Mississippi All-SEC football player Carl Hoppy Langley III, Southern Sport Inc. created the Debris Inhibitor to improve athletic performance by protecting athletes, allowing them to look and feel better with technically advanced products engineered with superior fabric construction, patented design, and proven innovation. Get a discount on your order by using the High School Football America code HSFA when you order at TDIRazor.com. That's Razor spelled with a U at TDIRazor.com. Listen up, football coaches. You need to check out a new scouting film solution called Crossover. That's Crossover with a K. Crossover Intelligence for Football gives you the edge you need to defeat your opponents. They not only break down and analyze scouting games for you, but they give you interactive tendency reports to diagnose your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. Crossover is your personal advanced scout, accessible from any mobile device or PC, and even integrates with your existing film platform like Huddle. Just transfer your scouting film from your existing video exchange service to the crossover website and in as little as 12 hours your film will be completely indexed and tagged. Each play will become its own clip allowing you to search the footage for anything you'd like. Their interactive down and distance reports will let you visualize your opponent's play calls in every situation 
or formation. Crossover Intelligence will give you the scouting edge you need to defeat your opponents. Go to crossover.com forward slash football to sign up for a quick five-minute demo to see how it can work for your team. That's crossover with a K, crossover.com forward slash football. Jeff Fisher back on High School Football America. If you're just joining us, we're going through uh, the contenders we have for the preseason top 25 that we will release on August the 1st. If you're just joining us right now, uh, we'll explain to you that our preseason poll is a mixture of our algorithm, which we use in season to determine our mythical national champ, and uh, opinion. So we're uh, taking a look and giving you some insight into the things that we're looking at as we go through the uh, the opinion part of our poll. And once the preseason poll comes out, we do not release our first in-season poll until after Labor Day. That will be September the 6th. Get a get the teams in there with a, at least a game under their belt so the algorithm uh, can kick in. So uh, let's. Uh, we talked about Texas in the last uh, segment. Lots of Texas teams uh, have a shot at starting the season in the top 25. Uh, one of the teams that I like a lot, and uh, heck, it's, it's not hard to, to figure out why. Uh, you just have to say De La Salle, Concord, California, the, uh, the home of the 151-game win streak and all kinds of state and national t- Titles and last year the Spartans a perfect 14 and 0 winning the state open division bowl game uh, they ended up number two in our overall poll in uh, in the Super 25 at USA Today High School Sports they ended up number three but the Spartans basically returning. Uh, their entire team from last year, and uh, there's no doubt about it that they are going to be uh, good again this year. They will get some real good tests. Uh, They'll start with uh, taking on Trinity out of Euless, Texas. Euless Trinity, we talked about them in the last segment. Uh, Euless Trinity has a shot at being in the top 25, so that will uh, show how good De La Salle is right out of the box in in week one, and that game is in Texas. Uh, Other tough games. They'll come south to Southern California to take on Long Beach Poly. Uh, Servite from the Trinity League and Jay Serra uh, from up in San Mateo. Orange Lutheran also on the schedule this year for the Spartans in Granite Bay, a tough program from Northern California. Uh, it, it all is going to hinge on a pretty darn good backfield that uh, carried them to a state championship last year. Andrew Hernandez and Antoine Custer uh, both back and uh, that's going to make them hard to beat. We know that uh, <laughs> they can run the ball and they've done it for years and years and years. Now, a quarterback, De La Salle, is going to be extremely solid. They have three players back, all that spent time because of injuries last year under center. So look for uh, big things out of the Spartans. They will be uh, in the top of the the stack when it comes to our preseason poll. They were uh, number two at the end of last year, and uh, don't be surprised if they uh, pick the number one spot when our rankings come out on August the 1st. Now, Bishop Gorman out of Las Vegas. We all know, you know, the problem that the Gales have. Once they get back into Nevada, it's just a cakewalk. The Gales have won six straight state titles. Last year, they were number one in USA Today's Super 25. And uh, with junior quarterback Tate Martell back, he threw for over 2,500 yards, 40 touchdowns last year, and also rushed for 433. The uh, Gales are going to be real good again. Tony Sanchez, of course, stepping down to take the head coaching job at UNLV, but his uh, brother takes over. His brother was an integral part of the run. The real key is how the Gales can do uh, in their very, very tough interstate schedule that will open up with Arizona Division I state champion Chandler. Uh, they have uh, Utah's 5A champion Bingham. Of course, Bingham last year took them to overtime before uh, losing to the Gales. Uh, Bellevue will be uh, taking on the Gales this year, and then they've got Long Beach Poly from California. So uh, bottom line is that the Gales have that tough uh, interstate schedule that if they can navigate that, and with a little bit of luck, that will help them in the algorithm. They could contend for uh, the national championship this year. So uh, again, if you're just joining us, we're continuing to kind of climb through the teams that uh, are going to be contenders for the top 25 in this segment. We're really looking at the teams that are right there 
near the top of the stack. Uh, De La Salle, Gorman definitely there. Uh, Miami Central, we had Roland Smith on the show a couple of weeks ago, and the Rockets are just loaded. Uh, and there's no doubt in my mind that they can improve on that number seven final ranking they had last year. The only loss over the last two years, the only losses, I should say, coming at the hands of Booker T. Washington. And uh, this year, I, I think they're going to be able to get over the hump, although that game on the 4th of September will be uh, will be a big one for them. And uh, the open to the season for the Rockets will also show how good they are. They take on DeMatha out of Maryland. DeMatha and Good Counsel, the two top teams from that area. I like Good Counsel a little bit more, but DeMatha can make some noise in a statement if they uh, open up the season and, and, and take down the Rockets. I like, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas, a team that uh, uh, started high in the rankings last year, number two, ended up number nine overall after that uh, that loss to Don Bosco. But they bounced back nicely and, and steamrolled their way. So, you know, like them a whole lot as far as out of the uh, state of Florida. And there's a couple of other teams that we're looking at right now in the state of Florida that could make some noise. Uh, let's call, climb back into California. Um, maybe not as strong as it was last year, but uh, certainly like St. John Bosco and the always tough Trinity League. Um, they are, uh, you know, they, they lose Josh Rosen, who's at UCLA, but uh, Sean McGrew, who's committed to Washington. I had a chance to talk with Jason Negro, the head coach, uh, a couple of weeks ago when uh, McGrew and a couple of his teammates made their verbal commitments. The Braves are going to be good. He thinks the offensive line that they have, best they've ever had, and the defensive secondary is as good as the one they had when they won the uh, state championship a couple of years ago, beating De La Salle. Uh, I think it's going to come down to the Braves and Corona Centennial. Matt Logan, the head coach at Corona Centennial, what can you say about a guy that has just you know, won and won and won? He's a class guy, class act, so I like uh, those teams out of California. Um, let's see, where else can we go? I mentioned this earlier. I, I, I like Colquitt County. Uh, Rush Propes, the former uh, Hoover head coach. Uh, they won the state championship last year. I like them. I actually like them above Archer, the team they beat in, beat in the state championship uh, last year. I know Max Preps has Archer pretty high. I like Colquitt County. I think they've got some pretty darn good talent back, and they've got uh, a, a state champion quarterback in... Uh, in uh, Chase Parish, so uh, like them a lot. If you want to stay in the South, uh, Mallard Creek, a team out of North Carolina. Uh, we heard Chris Hughes talk about how much talent they have back. Uh, they will be uh, in the hunt. Mississippi, uh, South Panola, the team that we had on the radar before anybody did last year, uh, had them highly ranked during the preseason. Uh, however, the uh, head coach's son, Tyler Pogue, the, uh, the quarterback there, he uh, he got hurt, you know. Tore his ACL, and that that changes things up in Batesville. But we we know that um, you know South Panola is a team that's extremely talented, knows how to win. Uh, last year they battled Starkville. There's a lot of quality, um, a lot of quality talent in the state of Mississippi this year. Uh, Oxford getting a lot of looks from some people in their preseason poll. But uh, I still think South Panola is the class. It's going to be, you know, how they can respond to Tyler Pogue's injury. And uh, I did read something that uh, uh, someone said, uh, maybe it was him and Tyler himself, saying that you know, I'll be back uh, by some time in the season. And, you know, that's, that's what we hope for. We hate to see any young man uh, go down for, a, uh, you know, his senior season. It's, it's bad no matter what season, but the senior season certainly – you know, a little bit tougher. Uh, staying in the South, Clay Chalkville. Man, that that the firepower on Clay Chalkville's offense is big, and I like Hoover down there too. Uh, different classifications, I like them. Uh, heading up north, LaSalle, the uh, the Lancers out of Cincinnati. Last year, they finished number twenty overall. They've got a ton of uh, of talent back. I talked about uh, Carmel out of. Um, out of Indiana as having a shot at being in the preseason one. The biggest question that we have right now, and we're going back to Florida for this one, is IMG Academy. Um, it's so hard to, to figure out whether they should be in the national rankings or not. It's not your ordinary situation, as we all know, at IMG Academy down there. They're not part of the Florida High School uh, you know, Athletic Association. Um, they're definitely, you know, based upon talent that they have there, um, 
one of the top teams in the country, and they'll play a, a good national schedule. Uh, we're still kind of trying to figure it out. Uh, at the end of the day, we will have them in the rankings, but uh, you know, very, very tough for me to actually say I throw my support behind them 100% because of the situation that they have there. I guess some could argue with me, just saying, well, hey Jeff, you know, private schools kind of have the same thing, but this is kind of a notch above the private schools. So, uh, you know, in New Jersey, it's anyone's guess in the in the Big North United. I mean, you know, shake it up and, boy, <laughs> Bosco, Paramus, uh, Bergen Catholic, you know, they, they just beat up on each other. So we're taking a hard look to see uh, which of those teams should begin begin the season in the uh, – in the top 25. So uh, there you have it. That's kind of a look at everything. We'll uh, be kind of dribbing and drabbing some stuff out as we go through. But uh, the top 25 will be released on August the 1st. And uh, then again, that will sit there and wait until September 6th when we'll release our first in-season poll using our algorithm. I want to thank our uh, partners on the show tonight, beginning with Echo 1612, get those instant replays on your sideline on your iPad, echo1612.com. Eight seconds after it's done, the instant replay is right there for you. And what makes them different from most, no cellular plan, no data plan, no Wi-Fi connection. Uh, I think Tony Merrill, when we had him on the show, the head coach at Christian Heritage Academy, who in Oklahoma helped develop it with uh, Chad Cargill, uh, said they took it out in the middle of the desert where there was no signal at all, at all and the system worked. That says a lot. Uh, coaches, designing it for coaches, that says a lot. Uh, good people, great product. If your opponent has instant replay on their sidelines, you're at a disadvantage. I don't have to tell you anything about that. Speaking of things that will make you better, a uh, great add to the coaching toolbox, crossover.com, crossover.com forward slash football. Crossover with a K, they will break down your game film for you, give you down and distance, all the tendencies. They will tag it. It's a great system. And, and coaches, you know, again, it's compatible with Huddle. That's the biggest question we get. But the biggest thing is how much time do you spend on the weekends away from your family breaking down game film, meaning literally going through the minutia of breaking it down and writing it down, and this is this and this is that. You're still going to have to go through your game film, but a crossover will do it for you and save you hours upon hours upon hours. Your girlfriend, your wife, your kids, they'll love you for it. Get a free demo at crossover with a K, crossover.com forward slash football. And moms will love it if the kids don't come home with rubber pellets in their shoes and in their gym bags and everything else they come in with. You know, the rubber pellets from Field Turf. The good folks at Southern Sport have the TDI Razor, the Debris Inhibitor Razor, that keeps those pesky rubber pellets from Field Turf out of your shoes. 23 great colors. You can get a discount by going to TDI Razor with a U, R-A-Z-U-R, TDIRazor.com, and put in the code HSFA to get a, a discount on your order. Well, that uh, was a lot of talking, but we got a lot done tonight. And uh, we'll be back next week with a couple of good guests on the show. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that uh, that little look inside what we're doing here to get to that preseason top 25 that comes out on August the 1st. All right. I want to thank uh, Scott Z back in Ohio for keeping the show running smoothly for now. This is Jeff Fisher saying good night and good sports from Southern California. You've been listening to High School Football America on the Artist First Radio Network.